Okay, let us show you a cataract surgery and that is how we would understand the various steps that are done in the cataract surgery. So first of all, what we do is we basically make a corneal incision. As you can see here that there is a corneal incision that is basically made here. Okay, now after this corneal incision is made, what is the next step we do? We basically put the viscoelastic inside the eye. Now why we put the viscoelastic inside the eye? So that basically maintains the anterior chamber because from that incision what would happen is that aqueous would leak out and the chamber would become shallow. So we put a viscoelastic inside. Okay, so after putting the viscoelastic, the next step that we do is we basically make a 2.5 millimeter incision. So the in initial in incision that we have made, that is a very small 0.1 millimeter incision that we have made with a micro vitro retinal blade or a sharp blade and then we are basically using a keratome. So this is a keratome which is going inside and that is making a 2.5 millimeter incision. Putting some more viscoelastic inside. Okay, now the next step that you do is with the help of a bent 26 gauge needle, we make an opening in the capsule of the lens. What we can do in this is that we can stain the capsule with the help of tripan blue dye also or we can do it without that also if we are getting a good retro illumination. So here we are doing it without the help of the dye and we are basically making a opening in the capsule that is called a continu continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. Okay. So after we have done a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis, the next step that we do is we basically do a hydro dissection. What we do in hydro dissection is we basically remove the attachment of capsule from the underlying cortex. Okay. So can you see that we have put a cannula inside? We are going just beneath the capsular margin, the anterior capsular margin and putting the fluid there okay and you can see that there is a wave that is going on so what that wave basically tells us that the wave says that now the capsule has basically there separated from the rest of the cortical material after this what we do is we separate the epinuclear material from the nuclear material as well so we are doing this this is called hydro delineation remember the step of hydro dissection should not be done in a posterior polar cataract. You would ask me sir why? Because if you put the wave there and already there is a thinning or a weakness in the posterior capsule, there are chances that it may open. There may be a posterior capsular rupture. That's why I told you when I was discussing the posterior polar cataract that a posterior polar cataract is predisposed to have a more chances of posterior capsular rupture. Okay, so we have basically put the done the hydro delineation and now we are rotating the nucleus so that we can basically remove all the attachments. After doing this, we are doing the phaco emulsification. So the phaco emulsification probe is coming through that 2.5 millimeter incision and now what it is doing, done is that we are removing the epicortical material and the second instrument you can see here which is there in our other hand that is basically a chopper. Chopper means chopping the nucleus into various fragments. So what we are doing is after removing the epicortical material we are chopping the nucleus doing the nucleotomy just see here. So now you can see that after doing the nucleotomy this is we have separated the nucleus into two parts what we do, do the next is we remove the nuclear material with the help of phaco emulsification probe so we are aspirating the nuclear and the cortical material see how beautifully it comes 
inside the phaco emulsification probe so we are feeding this phaco emulsification probe and this chopper is helping us to feed this nuclear and the cortical material inside the phaco emulsification probe okay now after this is done the next step is the irrigation and aspiration so whatever the subcortical material is left with the help of aspiration material okay the aspiration probe remember the same aspiration probe we use it in the congenital cataract we do not use the phaco emulsification probe only this aspiration probe what we have done is we have removed all the strands and the remaining material now it is absolutely clear and a retro illumination is coming here now after this what we are doing is we are putting the intraocular lens so from the same 2.5 mm incision we have put the intraocular lens now this intraocular lens is a unifocal intraocular lens and this is basically being put inside the bag inside the bag means between the anterior and the posterior capsule and then we with the same irrigation aspiration probe we are removing the viscoelastic so this is the cataract surgery being done in a patient and these are the major steps so what they can do is they can basically put give a picture of any step or would give a video and ask what is the step being done so that is why it is important that you should remember the various steps of the cataract surgery now what is the advantage of phaco emulsification surgery over the ecc or a sics i told you that it is a smaller incision it is a stitchless procedure you do not need to stitch the 2.5 mm incision you just hydrate the wound and there is less amount of endothelial damage that occurs as compared to the patients who are undergoing a extra capsular cataract extraction or a small incision cataract surgery remember small incision cataract surgery and extra capsular cataract extraction this is basically being used by some of the surgeons in those type of cataract which are very dense cataracts very mature or hyper mature cataracts the reason is that if we do a phaco emulsification surgery there there is would be lot of heat that would be generated inside the anterior chamber and then it can cause more amount of corneal edema and corneal decompensation 